All right, guys, we're going to get on with some predictions for Week 14, and we are going to start off with Thursday Night Football as we have the Las Vegas Raiders going to the Los Angeles Rams. Is Baker Mayfield going to play this game? He was claimed off waivers by the Rams, and uh, honestly, at this point, why the hell not? Yo, the Rams are that desperate for Baker Mayfield. Now, was that a decision because they wanted a quarterback or because they were trying to prevent the Niners from getting him? Could be a mix of both. No, I believe the Niners were second, I believe, in the waiver claim. So, nonetheless, I don't know if Baker's going to play this one. Irregardless, I got Ve- I can't believe I'm saying Vegas. I got Vegas. I thought I'd never predict Vegas to win a game again this year, but they've won how many straight now? Three, I think. Three straight. Yeah. They're on They're on a roll right now. I know they're on the road versus uh, the Rams, but the Rams are not good this year. Uh, nor nor the Raiders, but, you know, uh, Adams is cooking. Um, Derek Carr is uh, really getting going. Josh Jacobs is a freak right now. I might regret this because every time I pick them, they lose, but give me give me the Raiders. Now, oh, oh, it would not surprise me one bit if uh, Vegas were to choke this because they have choked some games uh, before earlier in the season. But ever since their bye week, they have been a lot better. They have been playing a lot better. So, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the safe bet, quote unquote, and just go with the Ra- uh, the Raiders here to to win this one. The Rams could keep it competitive. Their defense could, you know, step up big time in this game. But I think the the Raiders' offense is really gonna get going here and get the win. I agree. Next game, uh, we go to Sunday games. We have the New York Jets at the Buffalo Bills. Let's be real. I mean, the Jets have had their fun this year, but at this point, they're starting to become the Jets again. They're in the quarterback controversy, as always. Uh, Buffalo, no brainer. Yeah, the Jets. The Jets won't be taken seriously unless they true truly get a franchise guy. But they have not been able to do that for how long? And Buffalo, they're they're starting to get back on, on the 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 wind train, the wind column. Buffalo still looking good. Give me Buffalo here. Next game, we have the Cleveland Browns at the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals just pulled off a huge victory versus the Kansas City Chiefs, and I believe they were the first team to beat Mahomes in the month of December. They face a, a Cleveland team that got zero offensive touchdowns, even though they had the return of Deshaun Watson. They still won, but zero offensive touchdowns with $250 million guaranteed. I mean, that's just... That that I I to me that's a bad thing, honestly. Uh, they're facing Cincinnati at, at home. Give me Cincinnati. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the offense didn't do much against the Houston Texans of all teams with uh, Deshaun Watson and uh, the Bengals. They're they're finally getting the groove on. They've they've looked good. Uh, they got Jamar Chase back. I assume they're going to be getting. Joe Mixon back real soon. But even so much, AP Ryan has stepped in and looked pretty stellar. The Bengals are just. On a roll right now. I don't think Cleveland can really contain him much, honestly, even with Deshaun Watson in there. Give me Cincinnati to win here. Next game, we have a definite lock of the week. We have the Houston Texans traveling to Dallas to face the Cowboys. Seems like the Cowboys keep blowing opponents out, so I think we get another one here versus Houston. Yeah, Houston does not. (laughs) Houston don't stand a chance one bit right here. Dallas' defense is feeding. The offense is great. Dallas is looking great. They, I mean, they usually do every regular season until the playoffs come about, but that will come when that comes. But right now, Dallas is going to destroy Houston right here. Give me Dallas. Next thing, we should have a good one. We have Minnesota at Detroit. We have the uh, NFC North rivalry matchup here. This one was tough because uh, Detroit's competitive against Minnesota. You know, it's a rivalry you can anticipate, you know, a close battle here, especially with Detroit at home. But I'm still going to go the safe one. I'm going to go Minnesota. How about you? See, honestly, this could go either way because Detroit's looked very good lately. You know, they've won, I think they've won four of the past five games lately. Uh, the one losing to Buffalo on Thanksgiving. Uh, that was that in itself was the closing counter right there. Minnesota, they're, they're a good team. I don't know, man. Detroit just seems like the type of team that's going to fight uh, to the end and maybe manage to pull it off, although Detroit really can't close it out. But then again... This is Minnesota we're talking about, and Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, the real Kirk Cousins could very well come out eventually. 
I don't know, man. I think I might have to go with my upset of the week here with Detroit, especially Detroit. since it's in Detroit. I mean, th- th- this one could really go either way. Detroit's hot right now. And th- th- they are, yeah. This one could go either way with it being a divisional matchup. But since it's in Detroit and Detroit's looking real solid the past five games, I think i go Detroit with an upset you know, here. You know, I'm switching my opinion. I agree. Give me Detroit in the upset of the week. All right, then. Next game, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. The Jags did not look good at all last week versus uh, Detroit, man. We anticipated something a little more competitive from them. That was not the case. Uh, now, Tennessee's been uh, they've been a little rocky the last two weeks. Derrick Henry hasn't really gotten going. This seems like a game he's going to, so Tennessee for sure. Yeah, honestly, Tennessee, they, uh, they sustained a bad loss against Philly. Uh, Jacksonville... Uh, who the, who they who they faced last week? I can't remember. Jacksonville. I said Detroit. That's right. Yeah, they yeah. Got blown out forty. Yeah, so yeah. Both both these. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Both these teams got destroyed. So one of these teams are definitely going to have to redeem themselves for sure. I think that's Tennessee though. Uh, they they're just a better team overall. Derrick Henry's definitely got to get rolling sometime. I think it will be in this game for sure. Tennessee. Yeah. Next game we have an NFC East matchup. We have the uh, Philadelphia Eagles at the New York Giants. The Eagles have always had the Giants number. Always. This year might be a little different because the Giants are a little better now. Although the last three games, man, they had two losses in the tie. They had a very, very good start and now they're becoming rocky towards the tail end of the season, which is not what they want right now. I'm going to go Philly because they just have a great history versus the Giants. But I think the Giants keep this one very close. Yeah, they, they, they might even pull off the upset because they need wins now. Yeah. But I can't bet against Philly, man. No, you you can't whatsoever. You know, you definitely got to you gotta give praise. You got to give credit to Brian DeBoe, who's arguably coach of the year this year, honestly, considering what he's taken from New York, a team that didn't look like much to start the season to the team that New York is now. Uh, I believe they're still in the playoff race uh, currently. You know, the Bulls is definitely going to want to continue to try to win, try to get them uh, to, to keep rolling in the playoff picture. But Philadelphia is just too strong. They're too hot. They're too dominant. Give me Philadelphia right here. Next game, we have the Baltimore Ravens at the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have a lot of rivalry matchups, but this is always one of the more anticipated. AFC North football. I'm going to go Pittsburgh. Because they have two straight. This is uh, at home. They have home field advantage now. Winning three straight with this team, ugly or not, is honestly not a bad thing. Um, Baltimore's probably most likely going to be out with Lamar Jackson. That doesn't mean anything for this matchup because we all know no matter who plays these games, it's always a a good, close, classic encounter. But I'm going to go Pittsburgh. I'm going to go with a hot hand here. Um... If we can get a run game going, then I like our chances as long as we don't fall asleep in the second half. And hopefully the <laughs> offense can finish drives and get points on the board. But I think this is going to be defensive. I don't give score predictions, but I think this is going to be very under what the under is. So I'm going to go Pittsburgh. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's going. Yeah, it's 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 still as Ravens, highly defensive, very close, very competitive, very brutal, and a very entertaining football game no matter who's in it. Uh, Baltimore, they're uh, they have not been a great team overall this year. They've blown a lot of games that they honestly should have closed out. They should have won. They should have more wins. They could arguably have a better record than the Kansas City Chiefs if they close those games out, but they didn't. And I think it really exposes and showcases the type of team that Baltimore truly is, based off the players and coaches that they have. Pittsburgh, I mean, it's been a very underwhelming year. It's been a down year, as expected. And uh, they've won the past uh, two games of theirs on the road. They have they have two wins straight, but they haven't been in pretty fashion. The Steelers never make a win in very fun fashion, especially this year. I don't think this one will be any different, but I do think Pittsburgh does get the victory here, and I think it does come down to our kicker, whether that's Chris Boswell or Matthew Wright. I think it's going to come down to a kicker in general for this matchup, as it always does. Right. Next game, we have another divisional matchup. The Kansas City Chiefs at the Denver Broncos. Yeah, uh, Kansas City all the way. Denver sucks. Kansas City's coming off a loss. They're trying to get the first seed. Kansas City all the way. Enough said. Yeah, I don't think Denver's defense. I think maybe at the start they'll contain Patrick Mahomes in that offense just a little bit, but as the game goes on, they won't be able to to hold it down. Russell Wilson, the offense is just dreadful. Uh, the Broncos are just a, a heaping mess. 
Kansas City, they're, they're going to wipe the floor with them here in Denver. Kansas City, for sure. Next game, Tampa Bay at San Francisco. Tom Brady doing it once again, making a two-score comeback versus the Saints in less than three minutes versus the, uh, the Saints on Monday night. They're on a short week, and they go on the road against San Fran, who will be without Jimmy Garoppolo, and will be with Brock Purdy, right? Yes. Mr. Yeah. Irrelevant. Yeah, the seventh round rookie. So we're talking the goat versus Mr. Irrelevant. Yes. What a matchup. Indeed. You can't miss one you can't miss this one, folks. Tampa Bay. I just don't see San Francisco remaining competitive with a uh a seventh round rookie. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. They're gonna they're now I know Tampa Bay's not great this year. They really suck. Their offense is dreadful. San Francisco absolutely has a defense to limit Brady. But I just don't know, man. I don't think San Francisco has they, – they have enough offensive power to do some damage. But honestly, man, we've seen it, man. Without a proper quarterback, San Francisco is limited. And now they really are limited with what they have to for pretty much the remainder of the year, maybe into the playoffs. But Tampa Bay. I don't, I don't know if i go Tampa Bay for certain. I think San Francisco – can still get this one. I think they can still get the win, you know. To, uh, around this time, you know, San Francisco's, you know, they've gotten some wins lately. I think they have five straight wins right now. Uh, you know for a fact that they're going to want to continue to get wins in the win column, even with the seventh-round rookie, Brock Purdy, Mr. Relevant himself, even stepping in at quarterback, you know, that he has the weapons for sure to, to aid him and Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, guys like that. The defense is outstanding for San Francisco, uh, one of the best in the NFL, top three arguably. Tampa Bay, I, I don't know, man. Like Their defense has been very lackluster for the most part this season. The offense just can't get anything going, whether that's Brady and uh, Father Time finally catching up to him or Byron Leftwich just not really living up to the coach that he once was a couple years back as a Tampa Bay Offensive coordinator, but I, I think in general, San Francisco's defense and offensive weapons surrounding Brock Purdy, I think it's enough to beat Tampa Bay. Really? Yes. Okay. I mean, and I'm confident in saying that. We'll see. All right. We shall see. It should be an interesting one. Next game, we have Carolina at Seattle. Who Who's Carolina's quarterback? Is it still PJ Walker? My, Sa- no, I think it's Sam Darnold. Seattle. Yeah, Carolina's a mess, and we face them next week. Yeah, God Almighty, and that will be a fucking another edition of stressful Steelers football. Good Lord, man, <laughs> that should be one we definitely should see. I know we're not great right now, but God, Carolina's in a rough spot. Seattle for sure. Yeah, Seattle, no doubt about it. Give me Seattle. Sunday night football. We have the Miami Dolphins at the Los Angeles Chargers. Another primetime game featuring the Chargers, where they most likely won't close out a victory because they just suck at that. They just can't close out a victory, can they? No. They've been a very underwhelming team this year. A severely underwhelming team, considering the additions that they have in Khalil Mack and uh, C.J. Jackson, although Jackson has hardly played this year. But uh, Justin Herbert, I mean, I'll give him this. He's been a stud. I think he th- he's thrown 30 touchdowns already on the season. Wow. And Herbert, he, he, really? Yeah, he. I, I I believe I'm correct on that. And he didn't have Keenan Allen for the majority of the year. Mike Williams has been in and out. Right. He's had backup receivers and Austin Eckler pretty much. And Justin Herbert's doing what he can out there. It's just the defense has not held up their end, end of the bargain. And uh, like it never does. They're just the Chargers or the Chokers. Yeah. So Miami is uh, definitely going to win this matchup. They're high right now. Uh, they're trying to creep up in that division, so Miami for sure. Yeah. Now, I, I did I, – I think I read somewhere that Tua suffered a, a slight injury, although I don't think it's anything severe. I don't think it's anything to uh, to worry about for, for Dolphins fans and stuff like that, but Miami for sure, especially in the prime time and how Tyreek Hill's playing out of his mind and yep. just that defense in general, that team, Miami. Yeah. And to close out week 14, we have the New England Patriots at the Arizona Cardinals. Man, I don't know about this one. This is going to be one, another one of those weird primetime games. Um, I just don't trust Arizona. There's a reason they're 4-8. and eight. They, they, they overpaid for Kyler Murray, and they're sitting at 4-8. and eight. I feel like Cliff Kingsbury is uh, on the hot seat. If he's not, I don't know what's up with Arizona. So, 
I can't trust Arizona. I can't tr- believe myself in saying Arizona's going to win this football game. Even though I, I'm not greatly convinced with New England, I just don't trust Arizona that much. New England. Yeah. Uh, and Bra- and uh, Brady, God. Belichick has good history in Arizona's stadium. So yeah, he does. I, I think uh, I think Belichick has another good primetime showcase here. Yeah, I mean, this this one could be close, though. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Cliff Kingsbury used to be the backup for Brady at one point mm-hmm. in his uh, career for yep. New England. So he is going up against his former team, per se, uh, for this matchup Monday night. But give me New England here. I just Arizona, I don't trust them whatsoever. New England just seems like the better team on paper and on the field. They're actually they're actually executing there, and they just got a better coach overall in general. So New New England gets the win on Monday night. Yeah, but that will do it for our Week 14 picks, man. Let us know your guys' thoughts down below. Give us your predictions. Enjoy Week 14. Enjoy the football as the, the regular season is coming to the pretty much last half or the last quarter, honestly. So enjoy the last couple weeks, but enjoy this one, and uh, see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace! Peace.